Welcome and thanks for tuning into our session on bathing and personal hygiene. This webinar has been developed for people living with dementia and care partners to look at how dementia affects bathing and hygiene and some of the barriers we may need to overcome to help it be a more successful activity of daily living. By the end of our session, I hope that you will have a better understanding of the impact of dementia on the brain and how those brain changes impact activities of daily living around personal hygiene. Even the routine thoughts and actions around getting in the shower, finding the shampoo or recognizing the need to shower are impacted by dementia. And although there's no perfect technique or solution to ensure regular healthy bathing and hygiene throughout the dementia journey, there are helpful strategies and techniques we can try. We know that dementia is progressive and that symptoms change over time. So what works today might not work tomorrow or next week. As time goes by, we may need to review, change our approach and try something new to support bathing and hygiene. For most of our lives, bathing and hygiene have been natural, easy and regular activities. It's second nature to get up in the morning and head to the shower, brush our teeth and style our hair. However, personal care is a lot more complicated than we think. It requires brain power. Let's take a minute to break down all of the steps required to successfully have a shower. First of all, the brain needs to decide it's time to shower. The brain's ability to orient to time and space needs to be working to consider what day it is, what time it is, and evaluate if it's the right time to shower. The brain also has to accurately access short-term memory. We have to recall whether we have already showered that day and access longer-term memories like where the shower is located. Even before we have made it to the bathroom, our brain is tasked with complex analysis. More brain power is required as the brain directs us into the bathroom where we negotiate a complex series of thoughts and decisions. The part of the brain that initiates action has to be working. While we might have decided that we need to get ready for the day and even that we want to brush our teeth, shower and get ready, we need to actually get up and initiate the necessary actions. The part of the brain that turns on and starts the actions is often damaged by dementia. Once we get started, there are a number of steps needed. We need to get undressed, turn on the water, adjust the temperature of the water, find the soap and shampoo, get into the shower safely, balance, move arms, legs and body, wash and rinse, using the correct products in the correct places, decide when we have completed the task, and then safely leave the bath or shower, find the towel, move that all around the body, and determine next steps. Phew, what we might have thought of as a simple task all of a sudden looks exhausting when broken down into all its separate actions. These actions require a brain that can identify and recognize the items in the bathroom and know how to use them. It is possible to not recognize the hot and cold water taps or to differentiate between the soap and hair conditioner or to put the wrong end of the toothbrush in our mouth. The brain must be able to sequence tasks so that we don't step into the shower fully clothed and so that we can coordinate body movement and depth perception to prevent falling into the bath or onto the floor. Notice the picture on this slide and how strange the tub and water looks with the light reflecting. We expect our brain will continually and flawlessly make decisions about what needs to happen correcting the water temperature, turning the tap on, using a grab bar, using a razor, putting on deodorant, the list goes on. And we take for granted that our brain needs to manage these thoughts in a wet, slippery, often noisy, remember the noise of the fan and falling water, and sometimes poorly lit room with steam rising to the ceiling. What we think of as a normal, simple activity 
actually requires a lot of brain power and some of these tasks become more difficult with the brain changes from dementia. Bathing and hygiene are usually personal and private matters and being able to manage them on our own is for many an indicator of being grown up and independent. We manage these tasks behind closed doors and might not want someone else in the bathroom with us to help or provide direction. It can feel uncomfortable receiving help and even more awkward helping others with the bathing and hygiene. I'll mention some things that people have shared with us about bathing and hygiene. Some people may think, this is my parent and I don't want to compromise their dignity. Or on the other side, this is a private thing. I don't want anyone helping me in the bathroom. Gender is something that can cause a lot of discomfort for many people. While it might be relatively comfortable for a daughter to help bathe her mother, a son might not be comfortable helping his mother in the bath or shower. And a daughter may have no idea how to shave her dad or how to discuss hemorrhoids with him. On one side, a parent might be feeling, this is my child, I don't want his help, and I don't want to need his help. Or on the other side, a child might, may be thinking, I'm not prepared to take on this task. I'm uncomfortable and not trained for this, and I want to see my parent in a different way. I want to preserve some of the boundaries of our relationship. You may be worried about safety, thinking, I can't physically support him in the shower. We might both get injured or my husband insists he can do it himself. He doesn't seem to be aware that he's lost the ability to use his razor on his own. Or even people thinking to themselves, I'm afraid to fall in the shower now that I live alone. This can take an emotional toll. You may think I'm physically and emotionally exhausted from caregiving. I just cannot take on another task or I'm bathing less frequently because it's exhausting and it takes so much time to get through the process and then rest afterwards. People have told us, I keep offering to help and my mum refuses every time. Or home support only comes later in the morning and by then I don't want to shower. I don't want to wait so long to get on with my day. So those are some of the challenges. What kind of conversations have you had around bathing, showering and hygiene? What are some of the things you have said or you have heard? I'll share some responses and what else they might mean. You might hear, no, I showered this morning or I don't need a bath. These statements may tell us that the brain may be providing incorrect information. Because of the changes in the brain due to dementia, we can forget to take pills, forget to eat lunch, or forget to have a shower, or believe we've already done it. Or people might be wondering why they're being reminded about such a personal and private matters. Questions and reminders can seem invasive and inappropriate. No, I don't need a shower or I showered this morning can both be a sign of fear and apprehension about bathing. I remember one caregiver sharing that her husband told her, I hate the shower, it scares me. These responses may also appear when someone is feeling uncomfortable and pressured. It does not feel good when we need to be reminded about our personal hygiene. Can it be that the person is feeling cold and that makes them even more reluctant? Or might there be something in their personal history that makes a bath or a shower or a sponge bath better or, or perhaps a worse choice? Or perhaps your routine is to bath and to shower in the evening and home support will only come in the morning. A person living with dementia might respond, don't tell me what to do, which is when you think about it, quite a natural and understandable response to a grown adult being told to clean themselves. Do any of these responses resonate with you? Now we're going to pivot and watch a four minute video about bathing and dementia. As you watch, think about what went right and we'll talk about it afterwards.
My mother used to shower every day. Now, if I don't remind her, she refuses to bathe at all. If I try to help her, or encourage her to take a bath, she argues with me and gets upset, says she's afraid of the water. What can I do? Mom, it's 8 a.m., time for your shower. Oh, I don't need it. I, I don't want one. Mom, come on, please. We've gone over this over and over. No, leave it's me been alone. Don't, week. don't touch me. Come on, it's been a week since your last one. You need one. Please, get undressed. A person with dementia will often refuse, withdraw, or fight during a bath or shower. When you're helping someone to bathe, it's important to be sensitive and tactful and to respect their dignity. Remember, washing is a personal and private activity. Bathing can be scary for patients as dementia progresses. Okay, mom, it's noon. It's time for your spa treatment. Oh. I don't really want to go. But you love the spa. It makes you feel like a queen. Yeah, and after that, we'll go to your favorite restaurant for lunch. Well, okay, I guess. All right, good. Let's go. So first, let's start by unbuttoning your shirt. I'm going to do the top button, and then can you help? Okay. Okay. Good job, Mom. Okay, Mom, I'm going to put a little water on your toes. No, test it. See if it's okay. How's that feel? Yeah, it's, it's warm. Good. Now let's wash down there. Can you do that by yourself? Yes. Great. There you go. Okay, we're almost finished. I'm going to turn the water pressure on low and fill up this cup with some water. I'm going to stand up. You just sit right here. Okay. Just lean your head back and pour a little bit of water on you. And we're going to gently massage your hair with your favorite gardenia scented shampoo. How does that feel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Reassure your loved one that even though bathing is a very personal activity, you're happy to help. Ask how she feels and how she would prefer to do things. Here are some additional tips on how to help your loved one bathe. Be flexible on the time. If your loved one doesn't like to bathe in the morning, try a different time of day. If the word shower or bath causes anxiety, use a different term like spa or get clean. Make the bathroom inviting by using flameless candles, aromatherapy, or soothing music. It's important that your loved one feels safe. Install handrails and use a shower chair. Limit bathing to twice a week and give sponge baths in between. Let her know what you're about to do one step at a time and have her help as much as possible. Use a towel to drape over her to provide more privacy. If you don't have one available, consider installing a handheld shower head. Being able to aim the water can be helpful and less stressful. What did you see in the video that you liked or that you think you might try yourself? One thing I noticed was that the care partner spoke and moved quite slowly. She explained what was happening and focused on one thing at a time. I also noticed that the approach was gentle, unrushed and step by step. Did anything in this video surprise you? So how can we be more successful about making bathing a regular occurrence that is safe and pleasant? We need to first consider how we approach the topic. 
How can we raise the topic of bathing with respect and dignity? Try to walk in the person's shoes and to not trigger any fear or resistance, which might mean not having discussions and reminders ahead of time. But at some point, you do need to start the discussion. Try inviting instead of telling. The goal of this approach is to offer an experience that is special or specific to the person and which is respectful of their history. Knowing the person and what is a priority to them will help here. So for someone whose childhood home was drafty and cold and is generally very thrifty, the invitation might sound like, Dad, I've set up the bathroom and it's nice and warm. Let's get this done so we don't waste water. We can also link the activity of bathing with a positive outcome. You might say, Dad, I've left the bathroom ready for you. As soon as you finish in the shower, I'll have dinner ready, or we can head out to the keg, or I'll open the bottle of wine and turn on the football game. I invite you to notice that neither of the approaches go into a lot of detail about what's going to happen in the bath, or even how you might be there to help. They are simple statements that set the tone for something positive. Yes, a caregiver might be in the bathroom helping. However, that information isn't relevant at this stage. Routines can be helpful for people living with dementia and care partners alike. A routine can provide comfort, assurance, and reduce anxiety because it can do a lot to help complete a task in the most successful way possible. Try to stick with what has worked in the past, and don't forget, routine includes time, place, and setting, and can even include familiar smells and textures. For example, if a person has routinely showered at a certain time of day, Try to stick with that time frame and definitely try to continue with showers rather than changing to a bath. The towel can be in the same place every time. The toothbrush should stay in the same place with the same brand and flavor of toothpaste right beside it. Everything has a place and that place doesn't change. Taking a picture can be helpful to remember where things go and what are favorite products. Cueing is a method used to trigger the brain and can support people living with dementia to be more successful and independent at tasks. Some cueing needs to be arranged before entering the bathroom. First of all, make sure the space is ready. Check that the lights are on, the room is warm, and everything is in its place. Think about a sense of privacy. The bathroom needs to be set up to allow for modesty. No one else is close by, Towels are at hand to cover the person, a bathrobe or other type of clothing is handy. Short, concise verbal cues or explanations of what is to happen can be helpful and reassuring that there is support through the process. After offering verbal cueing, such as step into the shower, it's okay to pause and determine if you need to do more, to observe or to start help the person actually move into the shower. And if you need to physically help, explain how you want to help, like, I'll help you rinse off the soap. Verbal cueing may need backup, and non-verbal cueing can help. Showing or demonstrating are stronger, more effective strategies than just verbal cueing, especially at the mid to later stages of dementia. So handing over the bar of soap Showing how to build a lather or demonstrating how to hold the shower head can be effective. Each person and each interaction will be different. Instead of a verbal cue such as, it's time to brush your teeth, actually start brushing your teeth and then hand a toothbrush to the person living with dementia. Your demonstration is a strong cue that might result in clean teeth. Putting a toothbrush in someone's hand or guiding a hand towards the mouth can be enough to trigger muscle memory. Often, you start the process and the brain will take over. And no matter what cues you provide, allow time for the brain to process the cues and then respond. Try counting to five slowly in your head after giving or showing a cue. 
give the person time to process. Dementia changes how we see things. Even with careful visual cues, the brain can misinterpret information. It's not about poor eyesight. It's about how the brain interprets visual information coming from the eyes. The brain may struggle with color and contrast. A white toilet on a white floor may just look like a big white space. There's no contrast to help the brain recognize two different things. Add to that a white bathtub and white towels. The visual cues are not there to help the brain navigate that space. Or you might have a brown floor with a dark navy bath mat. It's quite possible that the brain interprets that mat as a big hole in the floor or a puddle of water. Some people living with dementia may find mirrors confusing. Their reflective nature and the movement captured in the mirror can be disorientating. In a foggy bathroom, that person in the mirror can be misinterpreted as an intrusive stranger. A cluttered space full of different items, patterns and noises can overwhelm the brain. There is just too much information for the brain to manage. Set aside some time to investigate the bathroom and look at it with a critical eye to assess the three C's, colour, contrast and clutter. So instead of three shampoo bottles, just have one. Keep the counter as clear and clutter free as possible. Remove extra items, decor, anything that can distract from the task at hand. Use colour and contrast carefully to allow time for the brain to process the environment and for the person to feel safe. Products are available to help. Coloured toilet seats, adhesive bath stickers, different types of bath mats and towels, handrails and shower stools. The mirror can also be covered or a blind can be installed over the mirror and pulled down at bath time. We all need good oral care every day. It's essential to the health of our teeth and gums and also to our overall health. Without good oral hygiene, we are at risk for infections, chewing problems, weight loss and increased vulnerability to other health conditions. As dementia progresses, brain changes may mean that someone might forget to brush their teeth or might throw away or lose their dentures or no longer realize the importance of good oral care. The brain may no longer be able to follow the sequential steps or to recognize the toothbrush or denture cup as the tool that they may need for the job. In addition, conditions like arthritis can make it hard to hold the toothbrush or use dentures. Swollen gums or broken teeth may make it painful, and so the person avoids doing oral care. Also, pain in legs or feet can make it difficult to stand at the sink for as long as required to do the task. It may be helpful to schedule a dentist appointment to do a thorough checkup so everyone is aware of areas of concern. Or talk to the doctor if you're concerned that a pain or depression may be the problem. Successful treatments of these conditions can make a big difference in all activities of daily living. When brushing teeth, break down the task into several steps and use nonverbal cues to set the stage and demonstrate the action of brushing. Brush your teeth with them. Give simple step-by-step -step instructions. Allow enough time for the task. Perhaps you need to get the person to just swish water in their mouth after a meal to remove food particles and try later for brushing their teeth. Use a soft bristle, bristle toothbrush or one with a large handle that is easier to grip. Some children's toothbrushes have larger handles or you can add a foam roller to it. You can also try an electric toothbrush. Mobile hygienists may be available in your community that can come to your home. Schedule regular dentist and professional cleaning appointments as often as you can for as long as you can. Find the right dentist that works with older adults and has experience with people living with dementia.
even with all the ideas we have covered, bathing and hygiene may very well remain a challenge. And this may be a point for you to ask yourself the so what question. That is, how crucial is it for this bath to occur today? To whom is it important? If a bath or a shower doesn't happen, so what? And you may want to consider other options for hygiene. A sponge bath is sometimes an acceptable option for someone who refuses to bathe. Consider their level of activity. Immersive baths or showers do not have to be taken regularly for everyone. A sponge bath can be enough. Because water is often a source of anxiety for people living with dementia, dry shampoo could use, be used along with a sponge bath. Visiting a hair salon or barber shop can have the added benefit of providing socialization and a sense of pampering. You may consider having someone else provide support for bathing and hygiene, such as a home support worker or a community bathing program if it's available in your community. You can ask if your adult day program offers this service. A case manager can help to provide options specific for your situation. You can always call the First Link Dementia Helpline for information about services in your area. For many people, it can be a game changer to have someone not emotionally involved perform the personal care. If hygiene becomes a health and safety concern, for example, if skin integrity issues or infections are present or body odor is unacceptable, you may want to talk with a doctor. So when we consider bathing and hygiene, what does success look like for you? This quote, if you never know failure, you will never know success, reminds us that failure and success are not opposites, but that stumbles are part of the learning process. Caregiving is about trying new things and endeavoring to make a difference, to be of support. And living well with dementia is a fine balance between living as independently as possible and needing to trust others to help. Success along the dementia journey is about building a toolbox and adapting and trying new things. It's not about finding that perfect solution, fixing everything and having no problems. Spoiler alert, the perfect solution or answer often doesn't exist. So keeping that in mind, today we define success as taking the information shared, thinking about it and experimenting. What will work in your life? What's worth trying here? It's also about accepting that dementia can be unpredictable. There are good days and bad days. So we try new things and hope that they're helpful at that moment. It's also about simplifying the day, making sure that there are not too many tasks that we are trying to complete. And remembering that a person may need to allow time for rest. For some people with living with dementia, even the following day may need to be a rest day. And here are the numbers for the helpline. If you have questions about information you've heard or any other questions about living with dementia, or you're interested in telesupport groups or Minds in Motion Online, please don't hesitate to call our First Link Dementia Helpline. English services are available Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. till 8 p.m. And services are also available Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. till 4 p.m. in Punjabi, Cantonese and Mandarin. Thank you for tuning in today.